Hi everybody, Mike Brown here again with another lesson for you in Adobe Photoshop Elements 11 from Educator.com. At this point in the course, if you've been following the course and gotten this far, you have pretty much learned almost every technique and feature that there is within Adobe Photoshop Elements to basically work on enhance your images, selections, corrections, retouch, and manipulation, my four basic categories. Um, in this lesson, we're going to play a little bit here, and I'm going to show you the whys of the three different ways to create a black and white photo. I think I briefly dealt with this in a couple of lessons in the past, but we didn't attack it as a specific lesson. There are three different ways to create a black and white. There's the grayscale mode, which just removes all of the color uh, information for the image. There's the desaturate using the hue saturation um, dialog box. And then there's the using convert to black and white, which you may have seen before under the enhance menu down here. I'm going to show you a couple of examples and talk about why the convert to black and white is better than the other two. And then we're going to take our best conversion and we're going to play with it a little bit. We're going to use the colorize feature, which I've gone over before. It's pretty easy to use, kind of makes an old time look and you can do other things with it. Show you how to add in add a vignette and stroking the border to come up with a finalized, pretty cool image like this. With a stroke border, you can see a little vignette in here. And here we have a really nice desert scene that has that kind of old fashioned look to it. All right. So let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, in the lesson on converting to black and white, this picture here, I took this morning on the way over here to the video studio because I was thinking about which images would best portray the differences between the two meth the three methods of converting to black and white. One thing, if you happen to be colorblind, or those those people that are red, green colorblind interprets reds and greens identically the same. So they all become the same shade of gray. So in most cases, if we just desaturate an image that has red and gray, red and green, you will just see overall flat grays. So we're going to take three different ways at this one. The first way I'm going to do is go to the image menu. We're going to go down to image mode and we're going to go to grayscale. And what grayscale does is just physically takes every pixel and converts it to a black and white. And as it says, change in modes can affect the appearance of layers. Flatten the image. We'll go ahead and flatten it and discard all of the color information. And here you see a perfect example of what I was just talking about. This was a vivid. We'll undo that. Command or Control Z. You can see the flowers are vivid, the oranges are vivid, the greens are really nice, command and control Y. And now we have an image which is almost a Where's Waldo for the flowers. They have disappeared because the red and the green, as you can see, have exactly the same tonality. The only thing that sets the flowers apart are the little white spots within them. It's very hard to see, no dimension, a very flat image. So the image mode grayscale doesn't work really that well for a black and white conversion. If we take a layer here and we apply uh, an adjustment layer for hue saturation and we just take the saturation level with the master and desaturate it, now it works a little bit better because if you look at the flowers carefully, the red color, gray, is pretty much the same as the green, but it did interpret the shadows a little bit better so that there is some definition here indicating that this is, uh, that those are separate flowers, but it doesn't really pop that much. What we're going to do is we're going to just call this layer here H, S, B, and W. So those two go together right 